In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and set up the software you'll need to be able to print anything on your 3D printer. Now, I do understand how confusing everything can be when you first start, so I'm going to keep everything nice and simple and go through one step at a time. You may have a printer already, or you may be looking to see what you need to do before buying your first printer. When you buy a 3D printer, you usually get all of the hardware you need in the box. However, what you usually don't get is the software you're going to need to be able to put anything you want to print in a language that your 3D printer can understand. The language that a 3D printer uses is called G-code. This is a series of X, Y, and Z coordinates or positions and directions of how to get there. It also tells the printer how much filament to extrude or squirt out at any one time. Any files that you might download online or even have on the SD card that comes with your printer won't be in this G-code format that your printer can understand. This is because the G-code has to be written bespoke for your individual printer. This is where Slicer software comes in. Slicer software is software that you have on your computer and takes any model file and turns it into this G-code that your printer needs. These may all be new terms to you and I remember how confusing it was when I first started. So I've put a short glossary down in the description to just explain what all these terms are. You may have your 3D printer ready to go with your bed leveled and your filament loaded, but what now? The first stage is to use your desktop computer or laptop to find some Slicer software. It's called Slicer software because it takes a 3D model and slices it into layers for your 3D printer to print one layer at a time. There are a host of different options for Slicer software out there, but we're going to keep it nice and simple and use the most popular one. It's called Cura. Cura started life as open source software, but is now owned and maintained by Ultimaker. Cura will work with a huge range of 3D printers, so it's probably the best one for you to start with. I will caveat this by saying if you have a Prusa 3D printer, you may want to use their own Slicer software as they make it pretty bespoke for their printers and it works very well. If you have any other make of printer, then Cura is my recommendation to start with. I'll put a link in the description, but a simple Google search of Cura will take you to the Ultimaker website where you can download the latest version of Cura. Download and install the software and open it up. The first thing you'll need to do before you can start using Cura is accept the user agreement and then tell it what 3D printer you have by adding a printer. I'm using a Creality Ender 3 version 2, so I navigate to the Creality 3D branch and look for the Ender 3 in the list. There isn't currently a bespoke profile for the version 2, so I'm just going to select the Ender 3. Once you've selected your printer profile and read or skipped all of the other info, you'll see a representation of your printer's bed and the volume you have available to print inside. All this information comes from the preloaded profile that you've just selected, and you can go back into the profile and edit the settings if you want. I'm going to leave everything standard to keep it simple. Up on the right at the top, you'll see the basics of the default settings. If you click the drop down arrow, you will see where you can change the recommended settings. And if you click on the custom button, you'll see a more detailed list of settings you can change. Eventually, you will want to look at most stuff here, but for now, the only ones we're interested in are quality, infill, material, support, and build plate adhesion. Expand all of these so you can see what you have. Now we need to find something that we want to print. The slicing software can read a number of file types, but the main ones you'll find are STL and 3MF files. You can download these for free from a website like Thingiverse, and often you'll have STL files actually supplied on the SD card that comes with your printer. The Ender 3 has a number of files, but I'd start with something that doesn't need supports. Supports are basically little towers that the printer prints to support parts of the print that would otherwise drop as there's nothing underneath them. These areas are known as overhang and are shown in red in your slicer software. I know you may be excited to print that Mando helmet or some complicated figurine, but to start with, let's just get a few successful prints under our belt. I'd advise that you start with something like this calibration cube. The link to the Thingiverse listing is in the description below. Download the files and make sure you extract them to a location you can find, then click on the folder icon in the top left in Cura. Find the STL file you want to print and then open it. Cura should place the object in the middle of the bed, but if not, right click on it and click center selected. You can now orbit around your object by holding down the right mouse button on a PC and zoom in and out with the scroll wheel. On the left, you have some options of things you can do to the model. If you can't click on these, make sure you left click on the model first. The top option is the move function. After selecting this, you can drag the model around the print bed by clicking on the arrows or typing in specific coordinates. Next is the scale function. Here you can increase or decrease the size that your model will be printed. Next is rotate. This allows you to, you guessed it, rotate the model. This is particularly useful when trying to decide which way up to print something. Depending on its shape, you may not always want to print something in the orientation it's going to be in after printing. 
If you have something with an overhang, printing upside down may mean you don't need supports. Next is the mirror function, where you can change the model to be a mirror of itself. The per model function lets you change settings for an individual model if you have more than one that you want to print at the same time. Then there's the block supports function. This allows you to tell Cura not to build supports in certain places if you don't want them there for some reason. For the cube, you can just leave everything alone. Now we've decided the position, scale, etc. of our model, we need to tell Cura what nozzle we have and what filament we're using. If you click the bar at the top in the middle, you'll see where you can tell Cura what you're using. I have the standard 0.4mm nozzle on my Ender 3 and I'm using PLA. These are the most common options and therefore the default. Switch to what you're using if you know that you have something different. If you're enjoying this video then hit like and think about subscribing to my channel. I make regular content to help you with 3D printing and other projects. Next let's come back to our print settings. This is where we tell Cura how much detail we want in our 3D printed part and choose things like infill. Firstly, we can change a whole group of settings by simply choosing between low, standard, dynamic and super quality settings. To start with, this may be all you want to change, but I'll run through some other bits just so you know what they do. In the quality drop down, you will see the layer height parameter. This is literally how thick each layer will be. The bigger the layer height, the faster your print will be finished, but you'll be more likely to see lines and any curves will look very blocky. Conversely, reducing the layer height gives you smoother curves, but it will take longer. The general rule of thumb is to set your layer height between 25 and 75% of the nozzle size. Therefore, for a 0.4mm nozzle, the layer height should be between 0.1 and 0.3mm. The default is 0.2mm and puts us right in the middle of this range. Next, we have the infill section. We can change many things about the infill, but the two options we can see now are infill density and infill pattern. Infill is what the printer puts inside your model so that the top has something to print on. It's similar to supports for the inside and will remain inside your print. You can change the strength of your model with different infill densities. While more infill is generally stronger, it will use more filament and take longer to print. For the calibration cube, 20% infill is a good setting and also the Cura default. Infill pattern is the shape that the infill takes. You may want to play with this at some point as different shapes can offer different properties, but for now let's leave it as the default setting of cubic. In the material section, you can change the temperatures of the hot end, the part that melts the filament, and the heat bed. Different filaments melt or transition at different temperatures, and you'll need to fine tune this setting to get the best results, but PLA will generally print with a printing temperature of between 180 and 210 degrees C. Leave this at 200 degrees unless you know that your filament needs a different temperature. The build plate temperature is the temperature that the bed, the plate that the print sits on, is heated to. Most filaments stick better to a warm bed or build plate, and 50 degrees is a good starting point for PLA. Some printers don't have a heated bed. PLA will stick to a non-heated bed, but it's easier with heat. Next, we'll jump down to the support section. We don't need supports for this model, but if we did, this is where we'd go to decide which type to use. I won't go into detail here, as this section warrants a video all of its own. If you're trying to print a model that has red areas, you'll need to turn on supports manually. Tick the box and leave the settings as per the default, unless you know what you're changing. The last setting that we're going to look at is build plate adhesion. This setting helps with getting the model to stick to the bed. A skirt draws a ring around the area where your model will be printed and does nothing to help with sticking the model down. What it does do though is shows you what the first layer height is and gives you time to make small adjustments if you need to before the actual model starts printing. A brim is a bit like the skirt but it extends all the way to the model and gives the print a much larger surface area on the bottom to help with adhesion. The downside of a brim is that you need to remove it afterwards, which can leave marks on your print. A raft is a mesh of filament that is printed down onto your bed, covering the whole area where your print will be. The print goes on top of the raft. A raft is only really needed in extreme cases where you can't get an awkward shaped print to stick and are not really used that much anymore. They were more necessary when people were using difficult to use filaments and lower grip beds. Now we're ready to slice. When we hit the slice button, we're telling Cura to use all of our settings to slice the model up and to convert everything into G-code for our printer to understand. Once the model has been sliced, we get some basic information on how long the print will take and how much filament will be used. If you hover over the information icon next to the print time, you can see how long the printer will spend doing each part of the print. This information can be really useful when playing around with the infill settings, as you can see the time difference with each option. You just need to go back to a setting, change it, and then hit slice again to see what difference it will make. Once you've sliced, you can preview what the printer is going to do by hitting the preview button at the bottom of this box or at the very top in the middle. On the right hand side, there's a slider where you can look at each individual layer the printer is going to do. I would advise looking at this before saving the output file as it gives you a good idea of what's going to happen when you hit print on your machine. 
When you're happy, save your file, either to the removable drive the micro SD card your printer came with, or if you haven't plugged it in, save to disk and choose a location on your computer. You'll then need to insert your SD card and copy the files across. I would advise shortening the name of your file as much as possible and adding some simple details of the settings you used. I like to add the material I've used, the nozzle size, and the time the print will take. This way I can check the machine is set up properly before I hit print. One tip when saving files to the SD card is always save them to the root directory. Don't put them in any folders. Most printers are very simple and won't see the folders, only G-code files. Now you have an SD card loaded with a G-code file that you can insert into your 3D printer. Every 3D printer's menu will be a little bit different, but it should be a case of inserting your card, turning on your printer, and hitting print. You should be able to easily navigate to the file that you've just saved to the SD card and select it as the one you want to print. The printer should then automatically heat everything up to the temperatures you set in Cura before starting to extrude filament. If the file doesn't show up in the list, then try removing and reinserting your SD card. If this still doesn't work, then try shortening the file name. My CR10S Pro printer is particularly sensitive to long file names, and it caused me a lot of headaches to begin with before I realised what was going on. Drop me a comment below if you've learned anything from this video. Or conversely, let me know if you think I've missed anything that might be useful to anybody who's not familiar on how to slice SDL files. Click here for more videos relating to the Ender 3 version 2, or click here for another video you might enjoy. Thanks for watching.